So I hope that's made sense to you. Uh, if you don't understand that or have any questions, uh, feel free to email me or text me or call me, leave me a note, and I'll discuss it with you. I'm happy to do that. And I will also uh, make an effort to get you uh, access to my template so that you can download this Mark of the Unicorn uh, digital performer template. Uh, it won't work if you don't have a digital performer. It won't work on Pro Tools or Logic. Those would be separate temp templates. But if you've got digital performer, um, you can hit me up for that and I'll send you a link uh, and make that available to you so you can download the, the very template that you're looking at right here. And believe me, I spent a lot of time and hours working on that. It, it goes way over to the right too. We're just talking about drums today, but I've got uh, other tracks for uh, all my instruments, strings, horns, all the way over, all my reverb returns. And then getting over onto the far side over here, I didn't even go into it. It's all my, I've got a whole bunch of different stuff for MIDI if I'm doing a MIDI uh, session like that. Orchestration, uh, all kinds of uh, great uh, sound libraries over that I use, uh, not typically on, on band recordings, but when I do orchestral stuff, I've got all kinds of stuff over there that I can, I can go into with you. As you can see here, obviously I spent a lot of time working on my customized template in Digital Performer. Uh, I wanted to show you briefly how I save those at the end of the day. Uh, so you can bring up that same template every time you have a new band coming in. Uh, you just go over here to File, and go down past save, save as, save a copy as, save as template right there. You click that, it'll open this little box. Uh, you can type in the name of your template right there and then um, use as default template. If you check that box, when you open a new template, it will obviously use this as the template. That way, every time you open up a new template, it'll pop this one open just as you've left it uh, so you can get all the little details in that you uh, have established there and you hit OK. Another thing you can do is from band to band, you can, if you have a, rec a band that comes back in from time to time, you can save templates for that particular artist or for that, for that particular band. It's the same process, but instead of saving uh, as a, a default template, you don't check that box and you just ch type, type in the name of the band there or the artist, hit OK. That way when you open up a new file, a new project, it will uh, give you the option of selecting that artist's name or that band name, and it'll pop up that same template in a blank project ready to do the next song. So all the settings you saved in the previous song for that tracking date are gonna be uh, right there where you left them. A really nice way if you've got recurring customers that come back again and again is to establish their little template and uh, personalize it for them. And don't forget, you can save uh, several versions of that as that customer continues to track different instruments or build up their template, uh, save that as a, a new template under that customer's name and or even replace the old template under that customer's name and then you can upload the, the most modern one. So a lot of different customers record in different uh, methods so it's good to have one for each customer. But if they're coming in brand new I just open up my brand new uh, template for my default and that'll get me uh, this one right here that you're looking at. But that covers it for today. Uh, I think I've shown you pretty much everything. Uh, I'll look through it and see if I missed anything, but that should be everything on drums. I hope you've enjoyed this uh, workshop, and I know it's been a long one, but you should know pretty much everything that I do about uh, mixing drums on the recording, uh, on the mixing board, as well as how to get things away from the mixing board as you're finalizing and getting things into the box so you have uh, complete automation control and recall over your sessions as bands come back and uh, want to refine and adjust their mixes over time, which believe me, they, they will, and so will you. So. Sometimes I find when I'm mixing drums in particular that I like the feel and the intuitiveness of mixing drums on the mixing console instead of trying to do it in the DAW. Doing it in the DAW is great because it's going to be completely recallable and whatever work you're doing over there is going to be saved with the session. But I've, I, I guess it's just from years of mixing drums on analog boards. I'm very comfortable and used to mixing my drums right here uh, with my, the ability to get my hands on EQs, levels, pannings, uh, even, effect, even effects ends up here. 
Um, so what I'll do to rejuvenate that feeling is print the stereo drum mix from the console to a stereo pair, a master drum group. And I'll do that old school. I'll do that in the mixing board. So the, easy way is to, the best way to do that is to, in your DAWs project, just mute everything but the drums. Turn off everything or mute everything and just have the drums coming out over your mixing console. Make sure you're not getting any reverbs or anything like that from the vocals, nothing sneaking through. So when you're listening, you're just hearing the drums. Uh, and then go ahead and blend your drum mix however you want, just like you would in the old days. Uh, it's really fast and intuitive. Your pannings are very right in front of you. None of this is gonna be recallable, but you get the drum mix sounding really like you want it. You can bring up the bass just for a second if you just wanna check it out to see how it sits with the bass and then mute the bass off. I do that a lot too, or even the guitars. Check your rhythm section. But the idea is gonna to be to have just the drums printed to a stereo file. Uh, get them exactly like you want. You can do. You can even use some reverb if you've got some uh, external reverb units, hardware devices that if you if you've got a reverb in there like uh, like me that I like for my snare drum or my room, I'll, I'll use that. Uh, EQ to your heart's content. Get everything balanced. It's a lot faster here too than mouse, mousing around with one little uh, mouse. You can get your hands and fingers on several things at once and move very quickly and intuitively and get a great sounding drum like that. It's very easy to work with a client too. They can say, hey, bring that snare up a little bit. Boom, I don't have to do anything. Overheads are a little bright. Boom. Add a little more reverb on the tom-toms. Little stuff like that. And just really finesse your final mix. Once you've got it perfect and everybody's slamming, you can turn it up really loud, make sure it's pumping. Play it on some smaller speakers to make sure it's coming through there as well. Really check your drum mix uh, and then print it. Uh, make sure everything's turned off, like I said, and record it back into your project file. And always start from the beginning of the, the project. Start at zero so it lines up later. And then you've got a stereo mix of that analog console drum mix. Uh, you won't be able to come back to it, so you know maybe do a couple different versions of it. You might want to do one with the uh, snare up or down, you might wanna have the kick a little more powerful. If you're unsure, go ahead and print two or three or four or even five different drum mixes. And then those are just gonna go into your DAW and you won't ever come back to this. You'll be turning these off and your drum mix is gonna come out as a stereo subgroup, just like the other, all the other subs. You bring them up to zero, put your, your pans hard left and right, turn off or disengage any EQ, and that's your summing mix right there. Just put, make sure you put everything right at zero. I've seen guys even take a yardstick or a ruler and use that to get this line just right, but I just, I just put them right at the zero marker right there, or unity gain if you want to call it that. Okay, and then you've got your whole mix, drums, guitars, keys, vocals, Everything just coming out in stereo pairs right that very easy to print stems that way if you want to print stems for everything you would just mute all and Then just print your drums in one pass Rewind open up your guitars print that Vocals and so forth just muting stereo groups and just letting two one stereo group through at a time I know that's a little confusing, but try it, try it yourself, and I think you're going to find that, especially if you're used to mixing drums live in a PA system, or if you've just been mixing drums like I have for years on an analog console, this is a good way to get a really quick and great sounding drum mix into your project file uh, without having to worry about coming back and recalling this later. If somebody wants to come back and remix the drums, they can. You just do the same thing again. It's never going to quite be the same. But you know, that's, that's how I like doing that. Really quick and intuitive way to uh, print uh, stereo drum mixes. You can do this with other instruments besides drums if you like. Uh, I typically just do it on drums, so everything on this side is drums, everything on this side of the console is, is gonna be uh, separate. 
Again, you do have the option of running that drum mix as, as it's going back into your recording, as it's going back into your DAW, you do have the ability to run that through one of those stereo compressors or the EQ that I mentioned. If you want to run your drum output, your drum mix output through the Apollo and one of those Apollo plugins, uh, you can do that. If you want to kind of do a little mastering processing on that final drum mix, you can do that as well. It's a great way to get a really slamming uh, vocal mix. But keep in mind, you can also do that later on mix down. You've got a stereo drum mix and your DAW, it's very easy just to drop one of those plugins on it there, and then you can really tweak it. You're not stuck with that particular sound. So usually going back into the recorder, I'll just leave it without any processing and just do that in on my mix down. It's a little more fast and intuitive than trying to mix everything with a mouse and in your DAW. Uh, it, it takes much more time there. Of course, it's recallable, but I really like doing it this way. I'm getting, I'm getting the best of both worlds that way. I'd like to thank you for uh, being so patient and watching all the way through. I know this has been a long video, but I had a lot I wanted to cover on drums and drum miking. It's a big part of my studio operations and I have a lot of history with it, so it's a little longer than most of the videos I've ever done. But thanks for watching. I hope it's been informative to you. And now you can check this off as one of the uh, things that you're a little bit of an expert on in the recording studio. I hope it's opened some possibilities for you and some options that you maybe hadn't considered uh, before. So as usual, don't be afraid to try things. If you come up with any of these little uh, tips that I've shown you uh, on your own, please send them to me and I'll pass them on to uh, my friends and, and colleagues. Um, that's how I came up with them. Other guys showed them to me uh, and I'm passing them on to you. So spread the word. If you got a cool little idea or a technique or even something that you disagree with that I'm doing here, I'm sure there's lots of uh, different opinions on that. Uh, let me know. Uh, as I said before, this is a forum. I like to keep it a two-way street and not just a monologue or a lecture from me to you, but make sure you get, uh, get back to me and let me know your thoughts and um, criticisms, um, ideas, anything like that. Uh, thanks for watching. And as always, aloha from Hawaii.